Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone you're in or whatever time you're watching this video. This is the Wix online meeting number 32, uh, July 10th. Uh, we skipped last week because it was a holiday around here. Um, plus, we had the Wix 39 RC, so we thought we'd just go dark while we did that. Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Anyway, before we get going on, uh, these meetings are recorded for those people who are unable to attend in person. Just keep that in mind as we roll. Um, into the agenda. Uh, like I said, Wix 3.9 uh, released last week. Yay, round of applause. Um, so we'll talk about the status of that a little bit. We'll go over triage. Um, triage is a little bit more interesting this week if you've been watching the bugs. There's a few bugs. And then, as always, questions, comments, we'll talk about stuff at the end if people have stuff they want to talk about. So, rolling right along. Wix 3.9 status, some numbers that I pulled down. We have about 250 plus downloads of the Wix 3.9 installer. Um, if you include the binaries.zip, I think it goes up another 80 or 100 or something like that. Um, but usually that's the same people, um, so I don't tend to count those separately. Um, uh, and that's from July 3rd through July 8th, so a couple of those days are weekends, which I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Um, Plus, it's a holiday weekend, which I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Um, you never know, because we're kind of asking people to grab this thing and put it in their build and, you know, give it a test drive. So maybe a weekend is a good time for that, or maybe it's not. It all depends on how people look at it. Um, we do have some bugs. 14 have been opened. We'll talk about that in triage. But three to four seem related to VRC, so I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Um, we'll see. And the only thing I have to say is, uh, let's keep it going. Let's keep downloading it, keep pushing it into uh, your various build servers, and kick the tires to make sure that things keep working. Uh, Bob, you have anything else you want to talk about 3.9? Uh, just comment on the bugs. Uh, you, you know, I, I agree. I think there's uh, a few that are related to RC, which I love to see, because these things did come in, you know, essentially, you know, after the U.S. holiday. Um, and they are related to, or appear related to the RC. Also, they're not the super serious. Oh wow, we you know really have to fix that. Um, they're they're like okay, yeah, sure, we should fix that. Uh, which you know I'm perfectly happy to have at this stage of the RC. Agreed. Uh, agreed. So while we're on the slide, anyone want to bring up? Anything particular? Otherwise, we're going to go jump in the bugs, and then we'll come back for big questions and comments. But um, 3 looks pretty good. We, I think we need to kind of regroup and figure out when the end game is, but uh, this feels yeah. pretty good, like where we're at right now. We'll take a few bugs and move forward. So That's the plan. <laughs> That's the plan. It's good stuff. All right. Jacob thinks he's typing something before his harder driver goes screwy in. He's... Yeah, <laughs> Jacob brings to the point that somebody else is trying to make the self-update stuff work and figure out how it works and things like that. So, yes, I agree. Um, hopefully it's all... It, it's always fun to see people using your stuff. I totally agree with that. <laughs> all right. I think, given that, let's just go jump in the bugs because I think that's where life will get more interesting. Yes? Sounds good. All right, Bob. Uh, are you ready to transcribe? I am. Doing all that? Um, Start from the bottom? Yeah, like always. Com interop assemblies are not included in managed custom action. Wait, hasn't this bug been around? Oh, okay, this bug is several, around. several times. And, oh, look, John's here. Um, yeah, so I went in and, and played around with it. Um, there, is some, there is some interesting stuff. It's like the com reference assemblies. Um, you can't directly make them uh, copy local, um, or you can, but you have to. Uh, what did I write? Oh, embedded embed interop types equals true. That's the default, and copy local is not enabled then. Yeah, but you don't, you typically want to do embed interop types to false anyway, if I remember correctly, because that was a thing that was created to make Office add-ins work better by including your type libs or your type lib marshaling data in your assembly, and it has all kinds of goofy stuff, and everybody was like, I can't believe you guys made that to default or something like that. And so they always want to make it false, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, but 
it turns out even when that copy local is true, uh, the assembly is not included in the, uh, the custom action zip or uh, or is it a resource? Anyway, whatever it is, um, it doesn't end up in the DLL that gets deployed. So uh, David had a change uh, for the Wix.ca.targets. John, is that what you're talking about? The target stuff that John put, or David put in the bug? Reasonable minds may differ on the implementation. Oh, yeah. OK. All right, well, that sounds like we should go talk about the pull request. So the only thing then it turns into is, um, do we want to take that fix in 3.9? That is question. Um, Jacob, does this fix automatically include it? Uh, it would include it if you set copy local to true, which you can only do when embed is false. So, yeah. Um, it basically comes down to when do we want to take this pull request? Cause, I mean, it sounds reasonable to me. I don't do common rub type things, but I can see why people do. Um, and if you're writing managed code and you want to do it, then yeah. The question is, do you want 3.9 or 3.10 or whatever? Or 4, I guess. We could always push to 4. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm okay with the change. Um, I actually did not look very closely at the pull request. I looked at the Oh, no, I did. Sorry. I, there's there's different code in the bug. Um, oh, yes. But that was because the code in the bug was something you could add to your own Wix project. Right. Or CS project. Um, so, yes, I, I actually tried the code in the pull request. And it works. It works in the situation that I tried it in. Uh, John says it works. Um, <laughs> and I agree with Jacob mostly. I, you know, this isn't a, something I'm personally concerned about. The fix seems safe, though, and I'd be inclined just to take it. It's nothing, you know, drastic. Cool. Well, then let's put it in 3.9. Um, and do you want to sign it? I don't know who's shuffling this pull request through. It's currently assigned to John because I know he's doing some investigation. Um, whoever wants to take it. So, but I'd say let's, I mean, if we're taking it, let's put it in 3.9 and go. Sorry, bug, not pull request? I, we're talking about the bug here, yes. Assuming if yes. you're going to take the pull request, let's put it in 3.9, because it's in 3x right now. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that and... Open it, and uh, and then request. we can go get this thing resolved and, and give whoever gets credit for creating the fix, if David or John or whoever did it, it's all good. That uh, works for me. All right. Let's go do that. And pat everybody on their back for going ahead and running this all around and down. It's awesome. For sure. Same expression on both sides of or in source code. Oh, someone sent a pull request. If we can take anything. Oh, I think I saw this one. Please merge the code change. Um, I'm pretty sure. Is this against four? It is against four, which is interesting. I wonder if the same thing exists in nine. Kind of makes sense. If we're doing anything to the related bundle, do that. It does seem kind of redundant. 
Unfortunately, it's redundant in a good way. I'm not sure we ever schedule anything. Do we do anything for related bundles on rollback? I guess we might. So. We're checking. Anyway, um, so, I don't know, seems to make sense. You can't argue that the existing code makes any sense. No, no, you can't. So it's either do this or remove it. Uh, in his description, he says that he makes it match something that already exists. Oh, for another correct... Yeah, but that's not a related bundle, I bet. I bet line 1144 isn't a related bundle. But if it is, then yeah. Anyway. Um, and this is against four? Yeah, so far I have not found... Um, you haven't found that in three? I've not found it in three, but... Well, that's possible. I mean, it's always possible that like I goofed a merge somewhere when I pulled those up across, or I, it's possible, I'm not sure how, but. So. Um, I have to, yeah, I'd have to go. Oh. All right, so uh, if this exists in three, would we take it? Um, it does exist in three, I just found it. Okay. Um, I would be inclined to take it as long as, um, as long as, uh, we verify that, you know, yeah, rollback is the right answer there. Well, all right. So what are we doing? Three nine, three ten. Someone taking this in three nine. And Jake was like, "What does Blame say?" I'm pretty sure it's probably been in there for a very long time. And That's I think that's possible. And and my bet is that it doesn't matter because we don't roll back related bundles. Is my bet. That's the that's the question. I want to verify that that we don't roll back related bundles. So do you want to um? Take the bug and yeah, let's. Uh... It seems like it should go in three X because the code exists there too. Oh well, yeah, I, I would be willing to take it in three nine. It seems. Um, I don't know. It doesn't sound. It doesn't sound very important. I mean, it would be triggered either way. The, it, it seems that it would be rare that it, that the. Execute would be tr would be triggering, but the rollback would not. So it's like I don't know that it's actually causing bad behavior right now. Right. Very often, but right. it's certainly worth looking at. So I will take the bug. Okay. And take a look at it. Yeah. And and we, whatever we do, the answer is to either remove that or fix it. And then if we remove it, we probably should put a comment above it that says. Right These things aren't things, but you know honestly, we probably should. We should probably make it like the other ones, in my opinion, just in case we have a rad rollback for related package, related bundles. Not no. right, 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 right. Anyway, that's my two cents. But yes, all right. Onward. Temporary column throws installer exception. Oh, was this already accepted? I thought I saw this yeah. go through. Right. I left the Montreal's just so we could look at it and go, yes, that was a good thing. <laughs> Mostly for my own ego, but also if, you know, something was bad, we could actually roll it back. Yeah, temporary object columns should be supported. Yeah. Yeah. I assume that, I just didn't even look at the change. I assume the change isn't bad. So. No. Yeah, right. Yeah. Makes sense to me. DTF custom action current director is different when the interop is in the GAC. Oh, wow. Not Same in thing. the GAC. 
Oh, this is already in? Yep. And there's one more like that. Set to the GAC. Chains behavior breaks the code that uses the relative path. Interesting. That does seem kind of kooky. It was, you know, get path relative to assembly kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, don't put things in the GAC. Um, create a folder, install bundle, install bundle. Oh, yeah, actual. Yeah, this is actually nice. Yay, people are doing the. Oh, is this another one of those that's been fixed already? See, Sean, yeah. figured, Sean figured it out before I did. If you open a bug in Wix, you therefore fix it. <laughs> that certainly is an awesome way to go. It is. Yes, compile the bundle, uncompressed copy of the folder should automatically be encrypted. Install the bundle, right. So, Sean, real quick question about this, because I saw some of the discussion go by. Sorry, I've been really head down busy lately, so I've been barely holding on on the conversations. Um, if the MSI is an encrypted folder, does it fail to install ignore bundle? Like if you put the MSI in an encrypted folder, does it fail to install? Or was burn doing something to cause it to install? Yeah. So it, it fails to install no matter what. Alright. Good. That was what I remember. Because actually code in the bundle trying to um, trying to prevent the cache, the package cache from being encrypted. And in this case, what's happening is the payload is bringing along its encrypted bit, right? Right. All right. Cool. That makes total sense to me. And yes, we need to fix this. This is one of those weird bugs that we got out of telemetry by watching Visual Studio things fail and really weird. Installer crashes when license button is clicked. Really? Yeah, I looked at this one a little bit. Oh, this one. Yeah, so... Uh, the, Lacking detail, but the only way I could repro it is if you install, sorry, if you remove IE, which is something you can do in like Windows 8, 8.1 somewhere, um, you remove IE and then install Chrome. Turns out Chrome does not register for any file extensions. It, it registers for protocols, but not for .htm and not for .html. So, if you if you do those things, yes, you no longer can. You know, you don't have an association for .htm anymore. Uh, Firefox registers for .htm and .html, but Chrome does not. So, if that's how you set up your machine, yes, it will in fact not work. Um, so, so we fix this by. Handling this exception, or something like that, and throw the thing open in Notepad. <laughs> Jacob, I, I didn't even see it. Jacob actually said the exact same thing. It's like, yes, now, this is what you get for not having HTML register on your machine. Sometimes when two people have the same idea, it's a it's an example of great minds thinking alike. Not always, however, and I think this is one of those instances. <laughs> Um, yeah, notepad. Uh, <laughs> I, I technically we could. I mean, we could we could bring along a text file as well. I think it'd be pretty awkward to say, "Oh, here's your license," and throw up an HTML document in Notepad. All right, you know that's a good point. What if we just change the stupid license to text and call it good? Oh, uh, I, yeah, I I don't. Yeah. I haven't looked in a long time. I can't believe there's any hyperlinks that have to be hyperlinked in it. And 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 so, help me if they don't have dot text registered. I don't think you can. Uh, I don't You'd think have you to do work to make that happen. You, yeah, I mean, I, removing IE is actually like you know, it's a checkbox. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I mean, I, I I understand why no people would choose to do that. I mean. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But to remove a text uh, handler, not even Notepad, like to choose to have no text handler, no. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm actually fine with that that solution. Um, okay. So who wants to do this in three nine? <sighs> touching managed BAs. Who wants to touch a managed BA? No, you don't have to change the managed BA at all. I don't think you just have to change it to be a text file. 
Man HBA is just going to do start, and just, and Windows is going to go. Oh, it's a text file. Let me go find the text handler. I don't think you change the Manage BA at all, unless it's hard coded where the license is. That was kind of my assumption, but uh, maybe, maybe. Oh yeah, there's a launch URL. Uh, yeah, it might work. Anyway, anyway. Anybody? Anybody? I mean, I take this, but I know I'm going to get a bug here in a little bit, and it's going to suck up most of my free time that I have available right now. Uh, put it in 310. Should have time to fix it in 310. <laughs> now, if we're going to fix it, we should fix it in 39. Otherwise, we should. Uh... No, no, no. This was in 38. We could totally do this in 310 because it's just too late for 39. I mean, I'm totally fine with that too. If it's not important enough to fix in three nine, I'm I'll take, just, I'll take it. It's it's it should be trivial. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's gonna take longer to test it. Ooh, you want us to test the stuff? <sighs> I assume you're at least gonna try to click on it, make sure your code worked. All right, Bob's got that one. One, one click. All right. URI function is case sensitive. Oh yeah, we were talking about this bug. <laughs> yeah. Because someone found this bug and we at FireGiant were like, whoa, 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 buffer overload? That's not a buffer overload? Not okay, not okay. So we went and looked at the code and we're like, no, no, no bounds problem here. It is case sensitive. So the title of the bug is correct. Ignore most of the text in it. <laughs> yeah. I've updated the description accordingly to avoid further confusion. Well, there's still the part in here. Should we compare? Regard, and not compare in a manner where it would be accessed. Oh, where and not compare in a manner that where it may access outside the bounds of a given string. Okay, it doesn't today, so don't break that part. Just need to do case insensitivity. Anyway, I don't. This could maybe be done in three X. I mean, it, it's loosening it, not tightening it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm. I don't know. Whichever you want to go. I can't believe uh, we haven't found this before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of, well. Nobody types mixed cases or whatever. Right, right. It's it's one of those. Big gaping hole that no one noticed because, you know, no one. Drove Nobody does hole. that. Yep. Um, but, yeah, oh, although I, I took a quick look at the function and went, oh, yeah. Um, Although, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, individual characters. It's like all the convenience functions for ignoring case uh, for strings. It doesn't, it, yeah, just add it, I mean, apples. It oh. Or, 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 done. <laughs> oh, I guess, I guess we can be, you know, uh, I was going to say anglophobe, uh, anglophonic, but... Uh, yeah. The yeah. It's a char by char match. There's nothing special about this thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then fine. Three X is, is fine with me. I think loosening, you know, loosening to include correct is fine. Yeah. All right. Perfect extension fails to load manifest on upgrades. When remove existing products is scheduled after install finalize. This is this is an interesting one. The manifest uh, is removed, probably. Yeah, I think the the timing, given how manifests are, the perf counter manifests are, are managed. Oh, it's the perf counter because, and upgraded and install were being loaded before the ones from the previous one were unloaded. That's probably true. And then That's... uninstall runs. Yes. I don't know how you handle this case. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a problem when, you know, we're, we have no choice but to run, you know, an external XE that works in a certain way, and in fact, it's it's bad. You can't count on the upgraded manifests to be actual 
upgrades to the previous manifests. Yeah, probably the fixes to, well, a possible fix. I don't remember how load coder works, but it could be the you have we should store the manifest like in the binary right table so that we're making sure we're doing it but i don't know that if you need like the dlls that this thing refers to it's been so long since i looked at any of this oh, yeah, so you gave it the path where things are i don't remember all the details of how this thing works yeah yeah i'm a little fuzzy on the details although it in the general case when you have a pattern like this a late remove existing product scheduling is kind of the opposite of how of the model right you know the the model for this thing for for load kitter is install uninstall install which is or an early remove existing products and that'll work just fine but Correct. the late scheduling is like uh what it doesn't fit the model of you know that pa that pattern of calling an XE. John's like restrict the scheduling when using perf counter. The problem is perf counter can't do that yeah. today. It's the other it, way around. Extension can well, like maybe it, if you're using it could do it with a binder extension too, but that'd be pretty be a lot of work, but yes. Um Yeah. It's, I, I say we put it in 3x and noodle on it. There may be may, maybe maybe like I said maybe the putting the um put putting it in the binary. Maybe only if you only need the manifest, maybe it would work. If we wrote yeah. the manifest to a temporary location, had it launch that, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm gonna I, start I, this by saying we should dock this. Would be a nice uh, quick fix if someone wanted to take that. Um, you could investigate manifest in the binary table if other files are needed. Well, do you want the doc fix in 3.9? Because if so, we should um, open another bug that we're going to put in 3.9 and not change this bug to be that. That's completely fair. Yes, I will. I will open a separate uh, bug for 3.9. And you said doc, so I, I tuned out. No, <laughs> joking. Thank you. <laughs> like, oh, Bob gets that one. No, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it, it's tag 3.8 because they can still file bugs against 3.8, and one of these days we're going to remove 3.8 as a valid thing to tag bugs. And then it will show up as... This, this has probably existed forever. In fact, it... As, oh, as long I, as this ex yeah. custom action is existed, I'm pretty sure this problem has existed. So. Yep. Yep. Um, all right. Cool. So a bug to say we could fix the doc to say, hey, by the way, we know this doesn't work, and then put us in three X to say, hey, we can investigate to see if this will work better or if we can handle this case, but not much hope of that happening. I don't know. We can try it. See what happens. Yeah. All right. Possibility to check revision number. This one is external. Revision version number. Using development, oh, during development, using, blah, we use the version number like this, right? However, when we deploy the application, the actual installer doesn't use the revision number. Yes, so we need to remove the previous version to use the new version. I don't, they, I don't understand. They want four, four version major upgrades. This is a, you're right, external. Go talk to Windows installer team. Unless you're using bundles, then it works. Sorry, we didn't write those rules. Um, and yeah, so not our, if this is an MSI, it's not our bug, and if it's a bundle, it already works. That's a good point. That's all we can do. Compiler and linker open some source files with exclusive access. Really? I I don't think I don't think that's true. At least at least source files, because source file, sorry, I, purely source files um, are open read share. Because I mean that's all from the preprocessor. There's no other way to get an actual WXS file open. Um, but I did not look at the. Uh, um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, other in, 
input files like Wixobj or whatnot. Source files. Oh, it was with some tools or compiler and linker open some source files. Yeah. 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 I think we've all been bitten by Orca and I know lots of people have been bitten by AD software. Yeah. So can we, let's, let's, I guess this is going through X because we're not going to fix it in three nine. It's been this way for a long time. Can we add a comment going, can you be more specific? Yeah. I, I kind of, like, exactly wanna... what kind of files? I don't want to open open this. I want to, you know. All right, let's leave it untriaged and put it in 3x, and we can come around to it next week. And after a couple of weeks, we'll we'll boot it into oblivion. Yep. Come on, a little more detail. If you were having problems, at least tell us file names that you were hitting and timings when you were hitting it or something. Right. Some source files. Well, yeah. it needs you narrowed it down, but you didn't mention the yeah. results of the investigation. Yeah, uh -huh. that would helped a lot. Yeah. Linker error on building C++ custom project. Shell Wappy. Oh, yeah. This is why we don't use Shell Wappy. Ah, uh, but we do. No, we, uh, well, we didn't. Now we do. I hate Shell Wappy. A bunch of <laughs> helper functions that are never in the default. No, I think Sean claimed responsibility. Or, did, or Sean, were you just observing? Uh, oh, yeah, Sean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't even read the comment. Just staring at this thing going... <laughs> I hate Shalapi. Um, another option is to push this into another OBJ file. At this point in time, the probably the safer thing is to put this into a path to util or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Such that so if they use that function, whatever function is pulling in this path canonicalize, that's when they hit the show wappy dependency. Right, right. That's, um, that's probably the best way to do this. Probably the least amount of damage to everything around. Because then yeah, a function doesn't... A Pick it took me a bit to figure out why we had, you know, proc, proc util, proc two util, and proc three util, and yeah, they have different dependencies sticking out of them. Yeah. So yeah, but let's do that. That way, you only if you use a new function in dutil in three nine, then you'd be like, oh, I guess I have a new dependency where your old stuff doesn't break and your new stuff does work. This is awesome. This is a bug that he found because he did exactly what I asked. They took their stuff and used it. That makes me very happy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sean, can you take that? Oh, I'll take this, but I don't know how we want to fix it. How about we fix it that way? Let's create a path to util and push the function there. And you don't even have to create a path to... Do we create a proc to util.h or do we not do that? We did not do Good. that. Good. So there should be one H file. We just put it in different OBJ files, or we just compile it such that it ends up in different OBJ files, such that the sections are separate and you only get the references. Hey, it's just like fragments in Wix. You'd almost think they got the idea from us. Um, <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> Rat bastard. Dude, 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 dude. I was behind the time. I was ahead of the times. So I was behind the times. So now that's so Freudian. Um, dang it. Give this bug to me. I must have screwed something up. Payload. Yeah, give this bug to me. I don't know why we're still... This should not have been happening. So. I thought I fixed it. Anyway, it's mine. Go ahead and give that to me. Alright. No error conflict between registry and directory search. Because they're in different tables. Same ID does not put a warning or bill. That's right. MSI, where they're probably being set with one actually reserves the results of the other. Yeah, MSI behavior on this is really kind of goofy. App search is goofy. Yeah, but it's like it's supposed to work that way because then you can set something else due to that or something. Well, that works if 
That works for what in Wix is a nested search, but I'm thinking in they this just copied case, their ID. You know, search A, search A twice, and yeah. And if they're not related via the other tables, I don't know. I, I was. I'm I not even sure how we f tell. Yeah, we don't. I mean, honestly, the way to fix this problem is to remove the ID so you don't set it. We generate it for you, and everything works great. Um, but what he just said is actually allowed. Yeah. It's allowed. But I, th I think he's right, though, in that the behavior MSI would be messed up. Oh, no, no, it should. No, it does. It, it does what they say it will do when you do this. I, I mean... Yeah, yeah. It's well, going to be complicated. It's going to be weird because it's app search, but it does do what they say it does. And it's like, well, that's the behavior you asked for. It's like, that behavior is goofy, and we're like, true. <laughs> yeah, well, so what's going to happen is it's whatever algorithm it uses to pick the, the locator table mm -hmm. or the locator row is going to find the same ID. It, one of them is going to win all the time, right? This is an ice kind of thing, huh? This should... I'm actually kind of surprised it isn't. Unless yeah, so I probably didn't figure out how to do it either. I yeah. probably forgot how App Search worked by the time they did ISIS. <laughs> Sorry, App Search is just this horrible, horrible design. Horrible design. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, so this is as designed. Well, I mean, I, unless we want to, no. I mean, we could take three X and write an, our own ice kind of check for it. I mean, we wouldn't do it as an ice; we do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and make it a warning, essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be that hard, would it? I mean, probably. Really, uh, it's app search, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Well, I mean, basically, at that point, we are looking for. We're looking for. I think it's duplicate IDs without like a signature row, a matching signature row. Okay, well, maybe, maybe it's not hor as horrible as I think. I don't know. Yeah, no, okay. yeah, so yeah, whatever. I, I think it going 3x and we could try to write an ice type thing to do it. Launch arguments not optional when launch target is specified. Well, that doesn't sound good. It doesn't. Fail to format arguments. No. Ah, ah, all right. Sean's got it. Good. This sounds like stuff Sean did. Cool. So we missed the fact that null will slip through and be formatted as null. Awesome. Oh, well. Cool. Thank you, RSA, Ozotron, and Germany. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's clearly an RC. No, this... this can, can someone, Sean or Bob... Sean, Sean, can you say nice things to this guy? Send him a mail, say, hey, dude, thank you. Because he found a couple bugs in 3X and say, you know, I'm all about giving, you know, watering people that do good things. Plus, his bugs are actually pretty useful. Like, hey, that's an extremely helpful piece of information right there. All right, cool. I think we're done with bugs. Oh. No, earlier today need to dock limitation. Oh, you just opened that. Yes. That 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 could be a little bit longer title, but that's okay. <laughs> I was trying to keep up, man. There is no keeping up. Oh. All right. Rock and roll. Questions, comments, things that other people want to talk about. We are through triage. We got three or four RC bugs, so we should go try to get those by, well, as soon as possible. Um. Oh wait, actually, that's that's a good point. There was a bug. Where was that one? Oh, three nine open. That's what I was looking for. That's what we should do. Three nine oh, yeah. open. I knew. I was thinking. I said, like, "There's something else we should do." Um, four zero three three. I need to Heath. I need to follow up with you at some point on four zero three three. I think you guys. You may have sent a fix for this in a different way. Um. And I, so I want to go talk about what happened there. Um. Light throws exception. Is this in now? Did that. Uh, 
Uh, yes, it is. Paperwork go through? All right, cool. Uh, that's still you. Um, deprecate away, switches. I, I sent my first fix, and then you point out that I missed a file, so I'm going to go back and get that file, too. Thank you. Okay, good, good. Uh, bundle self-update. Jacob, are we done with this? Oh, uh, how should... awesome. He just went away from keyboard. How <laughs> awesome is that? Uh, we should open... Yeah, we should look at the pull requests. I think his is done. I don't recall that we were doing any extra... Um... Oh, that's not it. Pull request here. Anyway. All right, well, let's just get that done, right? Yes. Oh, he's back. All right. Good. That's good. So then there's this one, and I, I took some time to look at the change. Um, so this this bug does not... The change has more than just this in it. This has the asynchronous yeah. XE change in it, too. Um... Anyway, so I, I looked at all of it, and there's there's a number of little things in there that I'm like, I uh, we we need I, we need to play with this a little bit more. Like, there's a new cache switch that sticks out of burn, um, and I don't know why that wasn't bundle dot whatever. Um, it was part of the whole thing since we don't want to cache synchronously. But you might want to cache. All right, well, that's, I mean, there, yeah. There's no so, user story for caching synchronously. Caching synchronously. What does that mean? We don't cache sync. I mean, if you do parallel execution, we don't cache synchronously now. I don't quite understand. Wait, so uh, this sounds like, so there's this feature for, there's this feature for caching packages, right? So that you can say, tell burn, hey, I want to just do a cache action and have the right thing. Right, so is there's a pull request that says that it's for support for this feature. Is it for something else where, what is, I'm so confused because caching happens, it, it's not synchronous with execution if you say you can do parallel cache. I'm, I'm so confused now. So this is, right, burn needs cache only behavior, cool. And then we need to be able to pass a switch, the switch to the nested bundle, right. Okay, right, so I guess where I got to at the end of this was that there's, there's some things in the pull request that are not quite, so a number of things to go through, I don't think it'll, I was concerned it wouldn't fit in 3.9, I think, is where I was getting to. Because, um, like, the XE switch that sticks out of it is, like, slash cache, when really it should be, like, burn.cache. Um, and so it, so and it was also bigger and a whole lot more feature work than than just the support for caching packages that I thought it was. And I was like, it's, it's just, it felt late for the set of things to verify it for 3.9. So I was thinking, taking it 3.10, if that was okay with you, Bob. Oh, sorry. Wasn't sure who you were speaking to. Um, uh, yeah, functionally, you know, it, it works. The uh, you know, Keith mentions the the stupid, stupid phone emulator thing that they do, where you know, you start install, you install a VS update, and then this thing will kick off and download. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's installing from your ISO, uh, because I'd be really, really annoyed if it started to download an extra, you know, gig worth of stuff that I'll never ever use. Sorry, I'm editorializing a bit, aren't I? Um, I never do that. No, I, I found it. I had to go remove it from my add remove programs yeah. when I got it. I was like, holy yeah. cow. But at least it was an add remove program, so I could get rid of it. But not a good design. Yes. But yeah. Yes. Um, well, I think that's probably my my annoyance there. Um, yeah. So yeah, functionally, I'm 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 not too concerned about it. But you know, the reason I was looking for your feedback there is, uh, you know, it, it is the mix of the asynchronous execution that I 
I'm not entirely bought into. Uh, the, you know, caching, you know, adding a switch to say cache. Like, okay. Actually, that, you know, I've run into problems before where having a way to, f to force a reevaluation of the cache is, yeah, it's not a bad thing. Um, architecturally, I'd like to be clean before before we come in. So um, I'm. I think it'd be fine if we, you know, looked at this for 310 and you know did whatever uh, cleanup we thought was necessary. Yeah, I mean, th th there's a. It's it's big enough. We don't even have like a whip for it. So like, there. That's a good point. I've been I've been through it a couple times, and it keeps ending not not being what I thought it was. Right. Right. <laughs> Which I, I basically kept going, this is not what I thought this was. <laughs> like, I had to get into it for a while. I was going, what is all this stuff in here? And I'm like, this is not a fix for this bug. This is something more. Yeah. Which I think people have been saying that for a while, but I've been too busy to go figure out what that meant. And I'm <laughs> like, this is much bigger. So, um, all right. So that's why I was saying, let's, let's, let's put this in 310. Um, it's all related. Well, I, I think there's a there's there's two features here, Heath. This is what the thing that gets me is because I understand a feature called support for caching packages that can be done that doesn't have anything to do with this asynchronous stuff, and it seems like that could have been done. And had the pull request been that, I would have known what I was looking at. But then I got this other stuff, and I was like, there's too much in here in one pass, and that's what got me. Um, and maybe it was too poss impossible to pull parts because it wasn't built separately, but the features are independent of each other. The ability to cache packages only, and the ability to do this asynchronous thing. It is a lot harder to pull apart after the fact. Yes. All right. And this whole asynchronous thing, like, I need to go, I couldn't tell if it only let you do caching this way. No. Which it shouldn't, because it, it, it's going to be interesting if you could then say, do this install, and then do this install, and launch it asynchronously and let it go happen in the background. It's going to have to wait and figure out that kind of stuff, but you could maybe, you know, kick it off independently. Anyway, so I, it, there's a whole lot of stuff that I was like, yeah, I have to sit down and think about how this thing works. So, so anyway, um, we just need to go walk through all this. Anyway, so that's why I was saying 310. <laughs> fixed if you fixed it for resolution. Uh, Heath, could you uh, do up a whip? No rush, but it would probably be good to have the whip to point to as we talk about the code. Yes, as we go, what the heck was it supposed to be? Right. Well, when Rob does that, anyway. Well, <laughs> all right. Well, I will read it anyway. So I, I was. So that was it. In the end, I knew I wanted to talk about this thing. I was trying to remember at what point in this meeting did we talk about it, and here it is. I think we should move it to 310. I don't think I think it's big enough, and there's enough stuff in it that we should talk about that we should do it in 310. And I know you didn't want features in 310, but I think this should be like a holdover from 3.9 that came late that looks good, looks like an interesting thing to do. We just didn't fit in 3.9, so I think we should take it early in 310 kind of thing. Yeah, no, I there... Hard and fast rules are meant to be broken. Yay, breaking the rules right from the beginning. There we go. All right. So, 310? Um, oh, yeah, I should be looking at that. Yes, one moment. I'm going to get coffee or something. And then the rest of these are the ones that we already did before. That came in the 3.9. Uh, that's awesome. Right. Awesome. So I need to get back to this bug at some point, and I need to talk to Heath about this because I think it overlaps with a fix they made. If I was looking at the same code, I think it is. Alrighty then. All right, now we're done with these questions, comments, things people want to talk about. Uh, we have uh, two pull requests. One is Heath's. The other is Sean's. We should talk about the the stir util changes. Sorry, stir util changes. Oh, the allocate thing. Yes, yes. 
I, I, I don't think we should expose the true false bit thing because it's way too um, subtle important and subtle yes um I, 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 I just don't, um, stir core should be like a private thing, and then the rest can be wrappers around it that are very well named. The stir alloc secure and the stir alloc, I think we're good. That, that was, that, I think that's what I put in the pull request in the end. Okay. It's like, dead silent. Bob's like, oh, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, I, 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 I raised the whole, you know, expanding the API service. Um, See my other commit that did it a different way. And, sorry, that, that commit is what I was asking about. Oh, uh, there was another commit after that one? Yeah, Sean, you linked to it from the pull request, as I recall. It's, um... Do you have a URL that I can copy and paste in here, and, and I can... Bring it up, and we can look at it a little bit. Oh, I see. It's not in the pull request. Right, 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 right. 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 That seems over. Okay. What's wrong with if statements? Seriously. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we don't have to make this hard. And it's, I mean, I don't have a problem with the if statement. This is, what is this? Obfuscate hidden variables. There's possibility for things to get out of sync. True. Yeah, okay. Um, you, know, you could do your 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 ternary right there, in in line. Just no. wrap it for ants. No, that this is fine because it's going to be used a bunch of times. I mean, if you're going to do it, this is not horrible. I would add or secure on these just so you know that they could be one or the other but that'd probably be that I mean this isn't horrible this is this is one of those things that I see I'm like oh somebody's being cute alright and then you go down later and you look and like well maybe there's enough of them that maybe it crossed the line that cute is worth it but that's kind of where I'm at on that code review <laughs> well but then you have to do this yes I suppose Oh, we have to maintain these in stir util? I don't know about that. This is a burn thing. I'm not, uh, okay. I'm not sure I want to, ugh, ugh, ugh. Thank you. Yeah. Rob got to where I got to. It's, it's kind of the same thing. It's expanding the API, not in the, not in the same way. So it's not, um, it's not actually expanding the, the public API, but it's expanding the, the header API. Anyway, I still so I so of all the options, I still prefer this. Although I'm not thrilled about this, I don't know if I want to maintain this. Although I know what you're doing there. What is? But there's no. Do, 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 do. Mm. I still this is better than the other way. I think. I think this is the right thing to do. This whole true thing is way too subtle for me. I'm yeah, I'm in full agreement there. I like having the two separate trees. This this, uh, is, this is this is cute, and I I see it because there's enough of it. You're like yeah, yeah. I don't know. I would have called this 
buffer PFN string alloc string or secure. I made it even longer, so every time you saw it, you'd be like, oh, look, that's not actually stir alloc string. That's actually this and or that. And you're like, really? What does that mean? This or that, right? Okay, yeah, right. And then... I don't like this. I don't like this. Where else are you going to put it, though? In burn. Above the place burn? that uses it. Oh, oh, you want to... Oh, I see. You're right saying... above this line. Or, you know, well, above... Up here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't make it... Don't make it something that's generally available. This is an optimization for burn. Right. Burn did this. Okay. Burn decided to be cute. If you're going to go be cute, you get to go pay the cost there. And yes, you have the problem that you could get out of sync. That's what you get for being cute. Um, yeah, okay. There's, but there's nothing that's going to check this. That is one of the disadvantages of function pointers. Nothing's going to check this. I would create a function where to go. I would create a function that no. I, I would create a function in burn. Since it's always about this hidden variables, I would create a function in burn that is sterilic and all the I'd, I'd create a function in burn that does this that basically takes an extra parameter of the obfuscated thing. And I would put it in here. And I would use it in the very few places. I would create a wrapper that had an if statement in it in the end to avoid this problem with the function pointers. Oh. There's several functions that would be needed, though. Yes. And then, and then make it very clear it's very different. I, I'm, I am back to you are. So Sean is right. I'm back to the true thing. But I'm only back to the true thing in burn, a function in burn, that is called something about secure copy obfuscated hidden variables that takes the variable obfuscated hidden variables in every case it's used, which make it clearer, which is what it's doing here, right? So this isn't so bad, except I, I, I think he'd said it. I would probably put it before. I would put it in the front. And I would call this allocate string paying attention to whether it's hidden or not, or some nice name that isn't that long. Because this, and then it doesn't, it, it basically, it expands the burn API for doing string allocations, not the global API of string allocations, and it avoids the pointer problem. It's all over burn. All over burn? No. Well, it's not, not just in... So. Well, no, 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 no. Only the cases where you do, like, these are fine. Like, these are just calling secure. That's fine. There's only a handful. Like, this file has a bunch, so this file will call it a bunch of times. In fact, you know, right? In fact, I might put the function in variable. I don't know where I put it, but I, you know. And so it's not there. There's I saw it somewhere else, but it was, like, only a couple more times. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, and I'd bring the hidden variable to the front and make it the first thing. So it's like, you know, hey, look at me on this bool, this bool. But it, see, in burn, it's never going to be a bool. It's always going to be this guy in the end, which makes it even more clear. And the rest of these, these are all fine. Like these, don't you don't change, right? These are all just secure, so you just leave them secure. Oh, I see. So this function we called one, two, okay. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen times total. And some of them are single instance because some of these aren't even, yes, some of these are alloc and format and stuff like that. Okay, okay, you're right. That's interesting. That would narrow it down to burn. That would avoid the function pointers, which can get broken. 
because that's what's just going to happen. We're just going to forget, and then we're just going to blow everything up in ways that are completely mysterious, and it's going to be well, horrible to debug. Because they all take Vargs. Yeah, and, 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 the Var, and then there's the Varg problem, which just makes it even worse. Yeah. And that would basically say, burn has this interesting behavior where we will decide whether to make it a secure string or not based off of this f obfuscated hidden variable boolean, pull it to the front, and then that narrows it down to the things. Sean, does that make sense? Does that, I'm, I'm, it's basically pros, cons of all the different ways to get it down, and I think that would be the simplest thing. And honestly, I might even put those string functions in variable.cbp because it's about this hidden variable stuff, right? You know, you could call it, I don't know, very, you know, where, do these functions all start with var variable? I don't know how the, I don't remember how burn does them, but no, this is just format string. I don't remember what's at. Anyway, something like var, or, you know, hidden variable, whatever, you know, allocate, you know, string out concatenate, hidden variable or not or something. I don't know. I don't think I'd go through creating a burn store alloc. I wouldn't I wouldn't make it that generic. I'd make it very tied to this hidden variable concept. Because as far as I could tell it's only used for this hidden variable stuff. It's not a gen it's not something we want to make generic. It's something we want to actually want to keep specific. Right? It's these hidden variables are a little weird. We're protecting them. So we're going to call this function for that. And if we ever have a use case where it's, we need to use it not for hidden variables, then we can relook at renaming it. But until then, let's keep it narrow. Keep it calm. Keep it cool. Does that kind of explain the thinking? I think maybe I should like set up meetings. And nobody can attend if they don't want. But I'm just going to record every time I do code reviews. Then I'll just post them up there. <laughs> that's a that's kind of cool. Uh, I think Sterilic Helper is is totally fine. Uh, I was also fine with Sterilic Core when it was the private static. Um, you also could drop. I think I would drop the stir from the front of it. Um, I think I I'm a little bit rusty here. I haven't looked them all because I don't think we typically. You know. Oh the, yeah, because they're static. Because they're, they're private, right? These are private functions, so they don't need to look like public functions. So I would probably drop the stir, and I might just call it alloc helper, or you know, allocate string, or allocate helper, or, you know, something like that. Yeah, yeah burn. I think we've been really consistent about naming like that, but yeah. Well, dutil is old, and stir util is yeah. one of the most old things. So that's why I, I always caveat. That's why you heard the caveat, not always caveat. That's why you heard the caveat, because story is so old, it's lived through a couple changes in philosophy of some things, and it doesn't always. And because it's so prevalent, it's very hard to change it. For example, story <laughs> here's the big change that we need to do, and I don't know when we do this. Story should not be called story <laughs> It should be called SCZ util. Um, because SCZ yeah. has turned into the thing that it is. It's actually a counted null terminated string, which is where we came up with SCZ. And all of these WZs in here, PWZs, need to change to SCZs. I'm not sure. I think they've started in some places, but not enough. Certainly not in the old functions. Anyway, so these should all be SCZs. So all this STR should change to SCZ util, and STR util should change to SCZ util, and STR util should be deleted. When we do that, given the prevalence of Sturidal, I don't know when we do it, but you know, it's probably one of those things that, I don't know, maybe in Wix 5 or some, who knows, when we finally just sit down, and, I, I feel like doing this. It's actually, I think Mike, Mike GC has brought this up a few times where he's been like, oh, that'd be something I'd love to do, because it's like right up his alley of, where he loves to go through the old code and just fix it. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll, I'll take one of those. I'll take two of those, actually. We could... So anyway, so the net net, these should not be called stir because they're private going forward. I can understand why stir util does and all of that. So anyway, probably what we do is we keep stir util, but it would all just funk straight through to scz util, and stir util would shrink to nothing is ish, and then scz util would be the backing, and we basically tell everybody scz util is the way you should be using it. Stir util is dead and somehow market deprecated. Does does C++ have deprecated pragma? 
I haven't looked. No, Sal does though, I think. Oh, maybe that would do it. Yes, and you may, so Sean brings up no function pointers. Right, you won't need function pointers because you'll have a new function, <laughs> and I think variable CPP, I, I don't know. Uh, variable CPP is my guess where it should go because it seems it's always related to variables. Y you've looked at that code more than I have to know if that was wrong. Um, I would call these alloc helpers, and I think you're going to need more than one function in the variable CPP because you have to handle concat, alloc, and format it. But yes, overall, yes, Sean. Much like that. That's the way I would go about that. Took a while to get there. Took a while to see it. But I think that's probably the safest thing. Cool. Um, do we need a bug on that, or do you think you'll get it done before we get around to doing triage again, Sean? I, I only, I mean, we could do it either way. Especially since I'm going to make Bob open the bug. Um, Thank you. <laughs> But it's a separate change, right? Separate pull request? I guess we have this pull request that we're just iterating on, so. Alrighty then. Anything else? We're five minutes over, which isn't too bad. Uh, seven minutes over. Sorry. Anything else going on? So did anybody's uh, World Cup bracket survive? <laughs> Some crazy games out there, dude. Crazy games. Good stuff. Sounders won over Portland last night. Woohoo. Crazy, crazy game. Portland ties it in the 93rd minute, which means you force overtime because we're in the sudden death, or not sudden death, an elimination round of the Open Cup, and <laughs> Sounders come back to, or rather, Portland finds a way to get themselves a red card in the first half, first half of this overtime. <laughs> Moving the time <laughs> hurt the U.S. Oh, Eric, mm -hmm. and then so then the Sounders end up finding a way to score, and then they end up finding a way to score again. And the final score is 3-1, and it's just like the best way to beat your rival, right? You give them back a chance, and like, oh, we tied it, we can get to the end of this game, and we can hold on, and then we can do our penalty kicks and, you know, live for that. And then and then, then they invoked the infield fly rule. I couldn't believe it. What? Did you actually watch it? No, infield fly rule. I was, you were, oh, you were in, I thought you said slide, which actually was how the oh. guy got a red card. Um, <laughs> it was a really bad two-footed tackle on one of our players, and you just can't do that. Two-footed? Thanks. Yeah, you know? <laughs> Sister's kick basically came in both feet, wrapped him up, and then got his other ankle and took him down. It, it's actually a pretty cool wrestling move, I think, but <laughs> <laughs> soccer is still a contact sport, I think, but not that high a contact sport. Anyway, we're talking about soccer at this point, which is awesome. Yeah, you get a red card for that. That's right, Eric. <laughs> Keith asks if I got pings from... I don't know what SofaScore is. Is there a place to watch them live besides the stadium? Um, is there a place to watch them live? So the Open Cup was on streaming. Anybody that had access to YouTube could have watched them on the Open Cup. In fact, you could go back and watch this game. And even though I've now ruined it for you, still, if you watch the last... Watch the second half, because Ozzy Alonso has this like crazy ninja kick that ends up putting the ball in. And I kid you not, it was awesome. It was crazy. So yeah, YouTube, go, yeah, you can find it on YouTube. They stream it live through YouTube. I have to admit, streaming live through YouTube is pretty cool. All right, it's going to hit 10-10. I'm going to call the meeting unless someone actually brings up something relevant to talk about, as much as I love to talk about Sounders and soccer and stuff like that. And no, it was not my fault that the U.S. Men's National Team got hurt. The U.S. Men's National Team... I love it. They were not good enough to get past Belgium. That they're, but I don't know if they're going to get past Argentina, honestly. Um, but holy cow, could they have ever gotten past Brazil? <laughs> <laughs> that that would have been fun. That, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Keith is like our passing game was horrendous. It wasn't our game was passing game wasn't horrendous. It's that Brazil is that good or that Bra Brazil is that good. Belgium was that good. Part of it was that. Anyway, different classes, different times, different people. So I'm just glad we got all our World Cup people back, and Sunday's game is against Portland again. How's that? Open Cup game on Wednesday night, league game on Sunday, double down. Man, awesome. Jacob's leaving. That means I've gone over my time slot. It's 10-10. I think we started about on time, so that makes this meeting 70-minute meeting. 
dude, we could go a little bit ma- later and make it a 90-minute meeting. Ha, ha, ha. Bad, <laughs> bad joke. Um, Heath, I'll catch you later. I want to look at this little thing together at some point. Um, on that note, I think I've talked to all the deaf people who are actually leaving the meeting early. That's how bad I've made this one. Um, as always, it's fun, gentlemen. Uh, good bugs, good stuff. Go run them down. Keep those of you that aren't here today and aren't, you know, fixing bugs and stuff like that. If you'd like to, welcome. Join us, please do. Otherwise, please do download it. Put it in your build process. Make sure it works. That helps a lot, even if you're not fixing the bugs themselves. Opening them, especially this stage of game in Wix 3.9, is very helpful. I think on that note, I'm out. Bob? You too. All right. Talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.